And we're back to learning Inkscape and this time I'm going to show you how to create these minimalist superhero illustrations. The process is always the same but the results stay vary depending on what you want to create or what kind of a template you use. For example, I'm very happy with this one of Iron Man or V. But I don't like my Deadpool. It's too much minimalism and it makes it look, well, let's say cheap or a little bit amateurish. But it depends, as I've said, on the template that you use. The main idea behind these illustrations is to take as much away as you can. But sometimes you take too much away and it doesn't look good. For example, here, my Batman illustration, I added the mouth on top because without it, it didn't look like Batman anymore. So these are decisions that you have to make on a case by case basis. For this video, I can only use images that are not copyright protected. You can find this image via description link below. But if you want to recreate your own, you can obviously just take anything, just type it into a search engine, an image search, and then you can also pick stuff that's copyright protected if you don't make videos about it. Because the illustration, it doesn't really look like the original anymore in the end. So the result is going to be your own work. So pick an image, press Ctrl R if you can't see rulers, and then set this guide somewhat to the center. So the image is a little bit off here. But that doesn't matter because we're only going to create one side and then we're going to create a copy and flip it so we don't have to worry about angles here or there. Make sure that your snapping is active as well. We've got snap to paths active and then use your Bezier tool. Follow this line. Don't worry about curves for now, let me give it a fill. And now I use this notes tool. I can hover over the lines, the icon changes to this hand icon, and now I can drag it and create curves. When you start with this, always go from the biggest elements to the smallest. So in this case, the face is obviously the biggest, and it should be in the background in the end. Then we go to object fill in stroke, I decrease the opacity. So for example, the eye or the eyebrows, they should be on top of the face. So make the face first and now create the eyebrow. That saves you a couple of clicks. It makes sense from time to time to turn off the snapping temporarily. Always close your shape. Then use the notes tool again. Give it curves. Decrease the opacity. But in this case, there's nothing underneath the eyebrow. So we can move on to the next element, which is going to be the eye. In this step of the process, it makes sense to create more elements than you actually need. You can delete them afterwards, but the more that you create now, the more you're going to have to choose and pick from in the end. Another tip is check these borders. So this yellow element, it should fit the face element in the background. So always drag these lines so that they fit each other on the left hand side in this case. I'm going to speed the video up a little bit.
All right, now we've got everything that we need. We're not going to recreate the hoodie because the background is going to take care of that element. Let me increase the opacity for all. And now I press S to select objects and then D for the eyedropper tool. And I sample colors from the original. But I may pick different colors in the end. We'll see. Now select it all, press Ctrl D, got a copy, hold Ctrl when you drag it out of there, and then drag it back into position, the snapping helps. So what I like to do is to give the right hand side a little bit of a different color than the left hand side, but at first let me make both white, and then I make this a little bit more grayish, that works well for example on this Iron Man design, but sometimes it doesn't work that well. So here in my V-Design, I didn't do it, and I'm not going to do it here as well, but this is the way you could do it. So pick a color and then go a little bit up or down with the tint. Let me size this down, holding Shift and Control. I'll put it on top of my background. Now hold shift, click on the two face elements, I make them white, and you can see there's still this black line. So just select them both, then path and union, and now it's one element, and this line is gone. We'll have to do that at the bottom as well, I guess, so for the beard. So shift click on them, path union. And here once more. I also want to get rid of all strokes, so I select it all, hold shift, click on the X. Let me select the face, control G to group it. I size it down a little bit more, holding shift and control. Now I create this shadow effect. I use guides for that. Once again, press Ctrl R if you can't see them. Use the busy tool. The snapping helps. Then I'll shift, click on the big background. So both of these elements are selected, path and division. Let me get rid of the guides, so I hover over them, press the D key. But maybe I'll give this a different color, let me press Ctrl Z. I first have to ungroup the face, Shift Ctrl G. Then I'll Shift, click on the face and my shadow, I'll make it a little bit grayish. What I also like to do is to select this element. And then I press Ctrl D to copy it, and I give it a little bit of a blur. Now I'll put it in background, and I'll put it one or two steps up until we can see the blur at the edges right here. So it gives it a nice, let's say, radiation effect. Now add the name. Use a simple font. It's a minimalist design, so don't overdo it with the font selection. I'll just use the Inbuilt Sans Serif here in Illustrator. And you can see that for the other designs as well, I've used a very simplistic font. I think that fits well for these kinds of minimalistic illustrations. Once again, the photo selection is the most crucial part. 
What is the process of recreating such minimalist superhero illustrations in Inkscape? If there are further questions, let me know in the comments below. I hope this video was helpful. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.